Okay, fifth graders, we are starting chapter six, section one. I want to make sure, yeah, this is recording. Okay, um, so this is should be familiar to you guys because it's it's something I've been talking about and, and touching on before. And it's uh, dividing by 10. But we're talking about decimals. And, and I've already explained to you how to divide by 10 or 100 or 1,000. With decimals, so let's look at the let's look at the first example they give us here. Chandra, I think that's how it's pronounced. She wants to cut a cloth into ten strips. All the strips should be exactly the same size. You can use a place value chart. Blah 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 blah. How long will each strip be? Okay, so it looks like one strip is eighty nine point five centimeters. So now they have a, a chart. Down below here, it says the place value is based on 10. The value of each place is one-tenth the value of the place to the left. Um, uh, dividing by 10 results in moving the digit one place. Oh my gosh, my music's getting loud here. Turn that down. Um, so this looks the same as moving the decimal one place. Uh, decimal point one place to the left each time so in, in this example here they're kind of shifting the number to the right or they're shifting and the decimal stays in the same place but you could also look at it like you're moving the, the decimal so I wasn't sure how clear that chart that chart was so I wanted to show you guys um, the same thing so here we have um, 8950 being divided by 10 so what do I do where is the decimal in 8,950? It's right here, and so we're going to move it over one, which is exactly what I did right there. It becomes 895.0. Now that point zero that I put in there, that's not necessary. Uh, it doesn't change the value, but just to make it clear that's what's happening. The decimal was here, and we moved it between the five and the zero, okay? Um, and so then the next one here, and so that was that one. Now we're looking at 895, which is 895 divided by 10. That equals what? 89.5. Again, the decimal's right here at 895. We move it over one place between the 9 and the 5, and it becomes what? 89. Point five or 89.50 if you wanted to keep track of that zero. Um, third one here, what do they have in the example? 89.5 being divided by 10 or 89.50. And here it is here, 89.50 divided by 10 equals, what did I do? I moved the decimal over one place between the 8 and the 9. And so what do I end up with? With um, 8.950, okay? Last one, so now we have 8.950 being divided by 10. What do you think happens? The decimal still moves over one place. And so what do we end up with? 0 0.8950. And I hope that makes sense to you guys. Because guess what we're doing in Chapter 6? A lot of that. A lot of that. Okay. So, uh, and just to sh show you something here, what if I had 8,000... 950 and I want to divide that by 10,000 well where's the decimal in 8,950 you know it's right there how many zeros do you see four zeros how many places are we going to move it one two three four it's going to end up right in front of the eight so that's what I have here point eight nine five zero so depending on the power of 10, that's how many places you move the decimal. So I could have written this, just so you know, I could have written this 8,950 divided by 10 to the fourth. Okay, equals, it would have been the same thing. It's four places I would have moved it. Because 10 to the fourth, 10 to the fourth is the same thing as 10,000, okay? All right, let's look at a couple of these examples here. That convinced me. What's that? What is that asking us here? It says, um, Celinda thought the thought of 89.5 in parts 
80 plus 9 plus 0.5 and divided each part by 10. Okay. Right, all right, so that'd be um, 80 divided by 10, 9 divided by 10, and then point f and then point 0.5 divided by 10. Okay, that would work. Then she added the parts. What do you what do you notice? What do I notice? That she did a lot of division. <laughs> that is more work. Uh, um, well, I guess each place value, I think that's what the book says, each. Oh, that was horrible. Hold on. I, I think I can spell the word each. <laughs> E-A-C-H. E I blame the stroke. Each part um, each part or I guess or uh, each place value um, was divided by 10 then added together lot more work if you ask me okay guided practice let's take a look at it here I'll do a couple of these with you guys and then you're on your own suppose Chandra wanted to cut the cloth into 10 10 squared strips so that's a hundred how long would each strip be well how long was each how long were the strips originally got to go back and look here what was one of the strips Does it tell us somewhere here? Was it 80? Um, I think it was 89. Yeah, I think it was 89.5. I'm looking at it right here. I'll circle it in red. 89.5. Does it say it up here? Yeah, I guess it is. 89.5. Okay, anyways, back to this question here. Man, they refer to these things uh, at a previous page, and you got to dig around for it. All right, so um, how long would each strip be? Well, 89.5 divided by, not 10, but 100. So what do we do? Come on. Two places, two zeros, one, two. Each strip would be 8.895 centimeters, because that's what they were talking about, centimeters, all right? Krista divides the number by 10, and then she divides the same number by 50. Which quotient is greater? Remember, quotient is the answer to a division problem. How can you tell? Um, well, dividing by 10 would give you the greater one um, because it's a smaller number. Look, if I, if, and I think I talked about this yesterday, if we had a, um, if we had a fifth grade boy, okay, and if I cut him in half lengthwise, whew, right there. Okay, so now we have, in fact, I can even do it. Watch this. This is kind of cool. Here's, that's about half. Cut. Ah! Okay, <laughs> there he is. Okay, he's half the height that he was. So if I cut him in 10 parts, I mean, there'd just be these little parts right here. Whoops, go back to my little drawing. Okay, there'd be just some little part right there. All right. Um, if I cut him to 50 little parts, there'd be 50 even smaller parts. Okay, so, um, so how would we answer that question here? Let me think about that. So Chris divides the number by 10, then she divides the same number by 50. Which quotient is greater? The one divided by 10 is greater. All right, because remember we're talking about parts. If we, died, if we divide something by two, like I did here, Okay, they're half of what they were. If I divide it by 10, they're gonna be one-tenth of what they were. 
If I divide it by 50, it's going to be, you know, one fiftieth of what they were. Tiny little parts. Okay. Here we go. First one, number three. Um, 3,000, no, I'm sorry, 370.2 divided by 10 squared. Man, this is so easy. You guys already know how to do this. 370.2 divided by 10 squared. Where's the decimal? Um, it's right there between the zero and the two. How many places do we move it? Two places, one, two. So what does it become? Um, and I'll have to erase that because I don't have much room to work there. If I move it two places, it becomes 3.702. All right, here we go, number eight. We have 2,810. Where's the decimal? It's right there, all right? It's being divided by four. I'm sorry, <laughs> it's being divided by 10 to the fourth. How many places is that? Four places. One, two, three, four. What does it become? 0 0.2810. All right. You guys should know how to do these. We've gone over problems like this. I've already taught you this stuff. All right. Let's look at 21 here. 21, 15. Point. In fact, I'm going to do that over here where I have a little more uh, room to work. Okay, so what's the number? It's 15.7. And we're dividing it by, uh, it looks like a thousand. Well, what's that? That's 10 to the third, three zeros. All right, so how many places do we move the decimal? What do you think? Three, one, two, three. It looks like we're gonna have to add a zero. So what's it become? It becomes, um, 0 0.0157. We've moved the decimal one. It was between the five and the seven. We've moved it one, two, three places. Okay. All right. Um, about done here. Last page. Problem solving. Everybody's favorite. Um, what's the difference between the winning butterfly's time and the winning backstroke time? Okay, so we got a chart here. It says use the table that shows the winning times at the Pacific Middle School swim meet. Okay. Difference. What does difference mean? It means subtraction. I think you guys can do that. Number 27, the winning time for the 100-yard freestyle was twice the time for the 50 yard freestyle, what was the winning time for the 100 yard freestyle? Okay, so it's gonna be twice, it's twice the 50 yard freestyle time. What are we talking about? We're just adding them. 28, what's the difference? Again, what's difference? Difference means subtraction. Subtraction between the winning 100-yard freestyle time and the winning butterfly time, all right? So, and you know, when we're subtracting decimals, uh, just as a quick reminder, I'm gonna have, I'm just gonna put up um, 94.621, uh, and we're gonna subtract from that um, 71.4, Five hundred. No, I'm just going to put 71.5. What do we do? Well, I'll write 94.62. I'm sorry, whoops, 61212. Now I'm subtracting 71.5. When you subtract, you keep the decimals lined up. So 71 goes right under the 94. The decimals in the same, you keep them lined up and then uh, point 0.5, and then I can add just two zeros there if I want, and then you would just simply subtract. What if it was uh, 94.621, and I'm subtracting, um, let's see here, how about um, uh, 
point uh, point four um, one one. Well, then I would keep the decimals lined up. I'd write point four one one, and I would draw my line and I put a little subtraction. I could put a couple zeros there if that helps you keep things in place. So when you subtract or add decimals, you line up the decimals. Okay, don't forget that. Otherwise, you'll get messed up. Keep the decimals lined up. All right. Um, let's see here. Help you out with another one. Reasoning. A pickup truck is carrying 10 to the third identical brick weights. A pickup truck carrying 10 to the third identical bricks. Oh, weighs 6. 1,755 pounds. If the empty truck weighs that much, what is the weight of each brick? Explain how to solve the problem. Ooh, that's a really good question. First off, you're going to have to subtract one number from another. I'm not going to tell you what number. And, um, And then you're going to divide that number by what? 10 to the third. Whatever that number is that you get, then you're going to divide it by 10 to the third and tell me what that is. I think I might reward somebody that figures that out. I might ask that tomorrow. See who gets the right answer. Um, I, I need to fill up my jar. Okay. That's all I'm going to help you guys with. Let you guys figure the rest of these out. I don't want to, I try to keep these under like 15 minutes. So, um, all right, that's it. See you guys later.